Hello, my name's Artemis, and the other week I made a little tweet about being very paranoid and neurotic about my love and enjoyment of peeps and paws and tickles and all of that stuff. And it got me thinking, like, yeah, I kind of still do have all of those paranoias and neuroses that I deal with, despite all of the overwhelming evidence to the contrary, and that people are actually okay with it, and it's all, you know, fine. So I thought, hmm, maybe it would be a good time to do a little reflection and talk about these sorts of things, because I'm sure it's something a lot of people deal with, maybe not around feats and whatnot not, but their own little things that they like, that they feel judged for, that they feel a little bit shy and abashed with, and uh, I would sort of give you some tips on how I learned to deal with it. Obviously, take these tips how you take them, because I still struggle with this shit, but I think they help, generally. I don't know, let's find out. So the first one is probably the hardest one because it can take a very long time to do this, but that is to truly know yourself. Obviously, you're going to need to know exactly who you are, what you're all about, to really feel comfortable with that. And for some people, that can take an incredibly long time. So don't feel like you need to rush this one. It, it is a process. Life does not happen quickly. It happens in stages. Uh, for me, it took a long time. I mean, I discovered, uh, like, tickles was the first thing I discovered when I was, like, 15. That was a very confusing time because, you know, Feet didn't even come along at that stage. Slippers was there, and I think slippers is what turned into footballs, quite frankly. Um, but it took a long time to sort of get on board with everything and figure out where exactly I was with it all. It took years, in fact. Um, and I mean, it took me years to figure out that I was even asexual. You know, I thought I was straight. <laughs> no, I thought I was gay. <laughs> uh, no. Because as much as I was like, maybe I'm interested in boys, maybe I'm interested in girls, uh, the whole time I was like, but I sure shit ain't interested in sex. I was scared of that shit. Still kind of am. So it takes a while to really figure yourself out. But knowing yourself is the first big part. You can't feel comfortable, you know, getting it out with everybody until you have it fully formed in your head. When you do get that, by the way, it's time to integrate that shit. You can't hide it. You can't just separate it off and expect for it to be okay. Not everything has to be, you know, for everybody. Not everybody has to know everything about you. That's fine. But a lot of these things, especially when it comes to orientation and, you know, who you want and whether you want someone, these are the sort of things that you can't just hide. You can't just not have them as part of who you are as a person. You need to get on board with those very quickly and integrate them. Just integrate what you feel comfortable with. I mean, obviously the foot stuff and all, I'm these days pretty open about it online, but still a bit cagey in person because, you know, I'm not going to mix it in with absolutely every aspect of my life because there is an element of give and take. You know, it doesn't have to be a big thing all of the goddamn time. But sometimes you can obviously enjoy. I mean, hell, I have friends who vibe with feet pics, for God's sake. So sometimes there is a time and a place where it's appropriate. But don't feel like when you figure out what turns you on or maybe doesn't, that you have to make your entire personality surround that thing and that everybody has to be involved in it because that will not work. You've got to find that sort of middle ground and find that balance to really make things work. And a lot of that comes from figuring out exactly who you are, which, as I've said, that takes a minute or more. Once you know exactly who you are, what you're all about and what you enjoy and all of that jazz, it's time to just own it. Be it. Own it. Just walk with confidence. Have that confidence. Fake that confidence if you have to. Because if you fake it till you make it, eventually you'll make it and you won't need to fake it. Like, if you just pretend that you have this confidence, that you are totally okay with everything, pretty soon you won't be pretending anymore. You'll just have that. And people will gel with that. I tend to find that the more comfortable you are with it and the less you feel like it's something to be ashamed of, the more comfortable everybody else is. You set the stage. You set the tone. You set the energy level. So if you're comfortable with it, if you're treating it as all as if it's something that's just okay, it's normal, it's not something to be ashamed of or worried about, that's how other people will perceive it. If you're being very cagey, if you're being very sort of shy and you don't want to talk about it and everything, people will obviously feel very sympathetic towards you but they will also feel that there's a reason that they have to be and that there's a reason you're like that too don't give them that reason like i've been caught out with top before at work with people where people were just like oh yeah well you put feet on the internet and a lot of people go like sure shut up no please don't don't say that and i, I just own that shit it's like yeah i do i do i put effort into these things right here okay and i do i'm happy with that and what and what is basically your fucking superhero power. If, if someone just comes up and says, ha, you like this thing, and you go, yeah, and, and what? 
then you've already won, quite frankly. <laughs> Take the power away from them. And yet, sometimes you'll need to explain yourself, sometimes you have to get people's minds attuned to what you're looking for, obviously with my specific little set of interests. Um, people tend to, as soon as you say feet, think that you mean smell, and oh no, I do not mean that at all. Not in the slightest, not even a little bit. Hate smell. They must be clean, scent free. They can smell of soap, that's okay. Otherwise, mm -mm, not for me, thank you, go away. Same with dirt and grime. So sometimes you have to explain things. But just be careful not to over explain things because you will have a lot more knowledge of these communities, these worlds online than anybody else will. Which means if you're very worried about appearing a certain way that is appeared in this community, they're not going to know it. So there's really no point to educate them on a concept, only turn around and be like, oh, but that's not me. <laughs> you know, I, I can sit and tell people all about the very deep, in-depth stuff with the mindset of being in defeat. All I'm going to do is open their eyes to this world and then turn around and be like, well, just because I know about this doesn't mean it's me. I did not need to do that because they weren't thinking I was like that anyway. Flat out. <laughs> So here's the really hard part, and that's getting through those voices that tell you that you're manipulating or some shit, uh, and trusting people, which <laughs> I have a hard time with too. So yeah, I totally fucking understand. But you have to just shut them out and not pay them any fucking mind, quite frankly. It's difficult, it doesn't feel good, but you have to trust people based on their actions and their words, because you know, you might be thinking that you've done something to make them do these things, to trick them or something, but people will generally tell you what their limits are. Friends especially, people who are close with you. They don't want the friendship to go away, they don't want to ruin it. So they're not likely to let something that's intolerable stand. You know, if you're doing a thing that doesn't make them comfortable, they will give you the signs and signals to say, this is not the direction we're going down. Trust them to do that. Because if you are integrating these things, you're talking about it or anything further, and they're okay with it, you need to trust that they're okay with it because they're okay with it, not because they're giving in to you or you're tricking them. And honestly, this is a big part. Um, calm your ego down, okay? You're not some master manipulator. You're not Hannibal. You're not a sociopath. You're not that fucking smart, okay? You're not tricking anybody into these things. You're not manipulating them. You're not pressuring them in a way that actually has an effect. If somebody doesn't want to do something, they won't do it, okay? So stop thinking that if somebody is okay with it, even if they suggest it or something like that, that it's something, oh, but I've manipulated them into doing it, I've guilt tripped, B bitch! I've had to fight this one myself when friends are just like, yeah, fuck it, I'll join in with the feet pics. You have to just come to a point where you're like, they're okay with it. It doesn't mean to them what you're scared it means. It's not a big deal. For if, if they're okay with it, they're okay with it. You need to be okay with it too. I have to stop myself apologizing for fuck's sake when people do this thing with me. I mean, I love it. It's cute. It's adorable. It's, it's just a really, honestly, amazing sign that people trust and accept me for who I am and they understand me. And I still feel like a piece of shit because of it because the little fucking paranoid bits of my brain are dicks and they're loud. You have to fight those. If people are consistently showing you that they understand you, that they trust you, and that they're okay with these things, you have to believe them, okay? If you trust them with everything else, you trust them when you want advice and everything, you have to trust them in this arena as well. It's difficult, it sucks, but it's the only way that you're gonna be able to make this shit work. And you will eventually be able to do it. You're just gonna have to put the work in. <laughs> But most of all, I'd say just fucking trust that everybody has something like this. Everybody has something that they feel slightly ashamed, abashed, or whatever. Just generally a little bit paranoid over, and that everybody is struggling with it in some way. And that you can find your way through it. I mean, sometimes you have to sort of weed out a few people that are going to be very against these things. Sometimes you have to, you know, accept that not everybody's going to be fully on board with it. And that's absolutely okay. But you, you can't just hide this shit. You can't just twist yourself to fit other people's molds. You have to be yourself to attract the right people that will allow you to be yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to end up fucking miserable. Because anybody that wants you to hide all this shit and feel ashamed of it and that you are disgusting, they're not someone you want to spend your fucking time with, okay? I've had people like that in my life. We don't fucking talk anymore. And I've been so much better off without them. They were surplus to requirement, quite frankly. So as scary as that might be, you have to just know who you are, be who you are. And if other people aren't going to get on board with that, that's fine. They can just do that elsewhere. But... I hope this helps. These voices will never likely go away. These neuroses, it's very difficult to fight them, but you can do it. 
I believe in you. I am so much better than I used to be. Not where I want to be, but way better than I used to be with this shit. Because holy fuck, I've had panic attacks when people found stuff out before. The lot. Eventually you re realize that none of it fucking matters. You know, I, I came to a point where people were like, her feet are disgusting. And I'm like, you've literally been talking about how much you like eating dirty anus. If you can do it with confidence, then I should be able to as well. Especially when, you know, objectively, my shit's nowhere near as disgusting as that. Just saying. But thank you for watching. I hope this helped. Yes, it was just another excuse for me to talk about feet, paws and tickling and show a few pictures. But fuck it. You know I like doing that shit. So I think I had some important stuff to say at the same time and you can't change my mind. Fuck it. I, was, I, I did a good. I said good. If you did enjoy it and you would like to help us survive because this bitch gonna be, you know, relying solely on this for employment because my company's dead. More videos on that to follow as soon as the social media policy is expired. But you can do that by checking out the merch, which has probably been flashing up, covering up this bean for a little bit now, or maybe even going on Patreon. Because that would be amazing and supporting us directly, helping us live. I, I don't know if I've made a graphic for Fansly yet, but if you want to see these and the soft, squishy feet that are inside of these, you can do that too, because I set up a little site for that. Because fuck it, everybody makes jokes about selling feet pics, and it's about time I got on that bandwagon, quite frankly. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I guess I'll speak to you next week. Bye!